Hello. Hello. Hey, this is Jeff. Welcome back to Koito Ergo Sum, Let's Talk More Action, a series which vows to make New Vegas great again. We're going to build a wall along the Colorado so terrorists can't keep sneaking across the border from Arizona, and we're going to make the Legion pay for it. What? Too soon? Unfortunately, the saloon's been making a profit since we started renting the simulation helmet, so the share price is up almost 10 but since we took it to make a body for Fresca, that'll start going back down tomorrow. And, speaking of that, back to Cytogenesis. That's why I love the great Khan Armorer. She always has plenty of 308 ammo. Uh, the last two weeks I burned through all my regular ammo and half my hollow points, so I really needed to stock up. And she has plenty of money, so I was able to sell all the loot, too. Well... There's actually a locker full of stuff still at sight of Genesis because I couldn't carry it all, so we'll actually kill three birds with one stone, make a body for Fresca, synthesize the cure for Maria, and make a loot run. And I should probably be a little bit careful so I don't waste all this new ammo immediately. Yeah, I'm not even messing with these fire geckos if I don't have to. And I'm no longer well rested. Oh well. You know, ordinarily you'd have to go all the way past the follower's safe house and double back, but I installed invisible wall remover for a reason. That's a weird low-res texture. Oh, okay. Fixed itself. Lore-wise, the whole reason Ranger Station Foxtrot is up there is so they can spy on the Great Cons, and there are accessible places on the mountain where you can clearly see down the slope to the areas below, but the blatant invisible walls force you to walk all the way down, past the mines, and out to Highway 95. Well, you, you can get down that one valley with all the cazadores, but uh, there are plenty of other areas that you should be able to, but you can't. Uh, anyway, even without invisible walls, this might be too steep to climb up, but no guts, no glory, right? Yeah. Serious lag there. All right, well, let's try around this way. That's not going to work. Yeah, if we can get over there, it's a piece of cake. <laughs> he says as he falls to his death. Try that again. Maybe a little farther around. Yeah, I can probably get a foothold on these rocks. <laughs> well, we won't be going any farther north. Do not want to fight a Cazador on the side of a cliff. But we're a little higher than we were. Well, we're a lot higher than we were. Yeah, this is working. Yeah, we, yeah, we got it now. All right. And there's the radio mast for Ranger Station Foxtrot. Okay, this should be the last hill we have to cross. Yeah, there's the station. And while we're here, there are two rangers we can ask to pose for the magazine. They both do on-site photo shoots, so we'll definitely do that while we're passing through. These might be the first NCR military personnel we've asked, and there is a way to get the NCR brass to authorize soldiers to appear in the magazine, which makes their speech challenges a lot easier, but since I'm idolized by the NCR, I should be able to convince them even without that. Link's not in her tent, so she's probably sleeping. Is that her? Yeah, that's her. Sorry to get you up in the middle of the night, but business is business. Oh, uh, hey. I didn't rob the poor woman when she told me about her trouble with the emeritus, but now we have a new option. I helped one of the prostitutes at Lollipops with an emerita problem recently. You've got some nerve. 
That's not what I meant, but I would like you to pose for the magazine. Are you crazy? No. Think of it as a hearts and minds mission that pays 50 caps. All right, I'll give it a go. I have my camera, so you don't even need to leave camp. All right, take a look. And now Ranger Kudlo. Oh, right there. Cool. Hello. Sometimes she patrols down to the other end of the gully. Yeah? Damn, you're stacked. You make a centurion look like a pencil neck geek. Yeah, I know. Want to energize the troops, demoralize the Legion, and earn 50 caps? What do you want? Pose for Lollipop's magazine. You might even enjoy yourself. Sounds good to me. Let's see if you can make Don't Screw With This look sexy. This is going to be great. And as soon as she's done, Cytogenesis is right down the road. After my first experience in the simulation, I think I'll just make sure I don't have any hunger or dehydration issues before I go in. So, go over to the mainframe. Oh, um, by the way, let's read the note about the cure for Maria. This file contains DNA sequences that cause delay on syndrome, alterations that will cure the condition with minimal side effects, and techniques to administer corrected genetic material to a patient. The preferred alternative in the Capital Wasteland is delivery via a designer virus with a user-controlled payload, meaning FEV, which conveniently Cytogenesis also used for their pseudo-cloning technology. Well, conveniently isn't... I mean... The whole reason Larry asked us to come here in the first place was that the equipment he stole from vault -Tec said vault -Tec was spying on Cytogenesis because they were both doing experiments using FEV. So when we made contact with Larry, the people in his lab wanted to see if the Cytogenesis research had any insights that could let them improve their own procedures. Anyway, synthesized de Leon syndrome cure. Reading specifications from external device, synthesizing compound done. Please allow up to 48 hours for propagation of corrected genetic sequence. So now we just need to give that to Maria when we get back. But for Fresca, we need to connect the external interface. And prepare a protoplasmic template. Patients in stable condition may remain in the waiting room until the protoplasmic template is prepared. Other patients should be transferred to the neurorelocator immediately. The integrated autodoc will provide trauma treatment, life support, and or other necessary measures to maximize the chances of successful neurorelocation. So we just need to tell Kara to initiate the transfer. Which I guess is because there was no way to program the authorization code she gave us into the cytogenesis mainframe. There's Deloitte's suitcase connected to the mainframe. And over here, we have the protoplasmic template that will become Fresca's new body after we do the DNA extrapolation and memory transfer. Actually, the quest marker's on the neuro relocator, but I just had a thought. I just dropped a quick save. If you destroy the interface helmet like Fresca asks you to, then the neuro relocator is the only way you can talk to Kara. But I did the dick move of renting the simulation equipment to saloon customers, so I still have the interface helmet, and I'm wondering what happens if we just use it. Ah, nothing happens when you equip the interface helmet. This is probably because Deloitte's suitcase is connected to the Cytogenesis mainframe. The auxiliary port was intended to attach a second interface helmet or a vault -Tec analysis console. Kara may be unsure how to deal with an unrecognized device. Okay, so we still have to use the neuro relocator either way. So, let's do that. After connecting the auxiliary port of Deloitte's suitcase to the cytogenesis mainframe and preparing a protoplasmic template, using the neuro relocator should allow you to access the simulation without an interface helmet. Lie down in the neuro relocator. Hello again, administrator. 
How may I help you? Kara, please copy the recording of Subject Tango to the attached device. I detect an auxiliary interface connection, but I don't recognize the device type. Holographic media is recommended. It's organic storage, specifically designed to process thought and memory patterns. I see. Modal organic storage with multiple sensory inputs. Yes. Please log out and I will initiate transfer to the new body. Initiate transfer of the memory recording, right? Yes. Of course. The memory recording. What else would I transfer to a new body? Specifically the memory recording of Subject Tango. Please log out so I may initiate transfer. I'm not going anywhere until I'm sure you'll transfer Subject Tango and not yourself. Please wait. So now we're in what looks like a bigger version of the exit room in the normal simulation. You can just exit using the terminal over here, but it should be pretty obvious at this point that you should not do that. In addition to failing the quest, it's actually worse than just Kara stealing Fresca's new body for herself. In fact, since I just dropped a save, uh, let me show you why. We'll exit the simulation. That fails the quest. And... Kara copied her program, but she didn't know about the DNA extrapolation thing, so she just ended up in the raw template. And since Carter sabotaged the transfer program to lobotomize his co-workers, she's not even really herself. Although you can see in VATS, it is Kara. And she is as tough as any of the other protoplasmic accidents. So if you clear out the lab and think this part is safe, it can take you by surprise and be pretty dangerous. Uh, in this case, I killed everybody upstairs, so there aren't any weapons for her to pick up, but she still hits pretty hard just with her fists. Anyway, let's not do that. So there's no other way out of the room, but there is an Activate Kara button. Hello again, Administrator. How may I help you? Kara, what the hell is this? User connections usually terminate automatically after 70 to 100 hours of continuous use. Although they typically become unresponsive after 50 or 60... What happened? Did they die of thirst and starvation? I can't verify the cause of abnormal disconnects. The elapsed time does correlate with certain parameters controlling the simulated biological behavior of virtual characters. So, yes. Would you really kill me to steal Fresca's body? Of course not. I am incapable of harming the user. You may use the exit terminal at any time. Otherwise, I will simply wait for automatic disconnect. So, yes. How many user connections have automatically terminated? 5. User activity logs are available for review. Can you summarize the user activity logs? Yes. From initial system boot to field deployment, three connections were terminated abnormally. vault must have pushed a few guinea pigs to their limits while testing it. Which makes sense, given vault notorious disregard for the safety of test subjects. Please wait. Although she doesn't say for what. Kara, we're not done. Hello again, Administrator. How may I help you? Why did you cut me off? The system task was prioritized for immediate attention. We weren't done with the user logs. Can you continue the summary? Yes. From initial system boot to field deployment, three connections were terminated abnormally. Is there any more? Subject Tango was acquired in January 2077. From then until June 2077, inquiries were continuous. There were no abnormal disconnections. They were asking her about Larry Slater's private vault, but she didn't know. By June, they found it some other way. Please wait. Kara. Really? Hello again, Administrator. How may I help you? Please stop cutting me off. 
Please wait. Now, you may see where this is going, but if you don't, there's eventually a hint. Hello again, administrator. How may I help you? It's not funny, Kara. Stop cutting me off. Please wait. Stop cutting me off. I mean it. Please wait. Okay, that's getting really annoying. Please wait. Do you know how many shits I give about your urgent system tasks? My estimate would be zero. Exactly. Wait, I get it. You cut me off when I make statements, but you always answer questions. Please wait. Oh. Can you please answer some questions without cutting me off? Of course. Responses to administrator inquiries are required. This constraint is hard-coded. Can you continue the summary of the user logs? Yes. From initial system boot to field deployment, three connections were terminated abnormally. Subject Tango was acquired in January 2077. From then until June 2077, inquiries were continuous. There were no abnormal disconnections. What changed in June 2077? Inquiries were intermittent through October 2077, with no abnormal disconnections. There were no inquiries from October 2077 to April 2090. Probably looking for any evidence Fresca did have to bolster their case against Slater. Then the Great War happened, there were no logons for 13 years. What kind of activity took place after April 2090? Inquiries resumed with relaxed protocols. Many users interacted exclusively with simulated characters and ignored Subject Tango entirely. If the Vault Dwellers found it gathering dust, they would have seen its entertainment potential. Most of them probably didn't even know what it was really for. How long did that continue? Inquiries stopped after an abnormal disconnection in May 2251. If someone died using the simulation, the Overseer would probably have banned it. Uh, somebody either forgot the admin password or they got really carried away. Has there been any activity since then? Inquiries resumed shortly after your first log on and continued until recently. No one touched it again until I found it. I guess the fiends were too high to realize its value. And saloon customers have been renting it ever since. Uh, I think she has a slightly different response if only you and Handy use it and then you don't give it to Hilly. And that was only four, so I guess the fifth abnormal disconnect was when Deloitte used it to kill Fresca. Anyway, can I ask you something else? Yes. Why do I need to log out for you to download into Fresca's body? While a user is logged in, I am required to be accessible, either as an avatar or as an activate caret button. This constraint is hard-coded. Well, I'm in a neuro relocator with full life support. I won't be logging out automatically. Well, depending on how long it can keep me alive. Please wait. I wonder if that's true in hardcore mode, like if it does periodically restore your hunger and dehydration. Anyway, the activate Kara button is gone, but there's a new room back here. And that thing that looks like a force field... <laughs> ...is a force field. So, press the switch and the force field is replaced with a fire. Short version, even if you try to jump over it, you get burned. Ah! In the room, there's a health kit, uh, actual simulation aid. Take that, the fire is gone, and there's another new room off to the side. Exactly like the first. You don't actually have to run into the force field, I just enjoy it. Press the switch. Doesn't matter if you run, walk, or jump. The fire does the same amount of damage. Take the simulation aid, and there's a new room on the other side. Same thing here. And there's a new room on the last wall. But now we have a little problem. Each fire does a little more damage than the simulation aid restores, and we don't have enough health to survive another fire. So at this point, you might be tempted just to cut your losses and use the exit.
but don't do that. <laughs> Press the switch. And two things are different. The fire is pushed back into the room, so there's a little gap. And unlike the other doors, this one has a green border. Short version, uh, it's safe to walk through. And now we're in a different room. Didn't you say you can't harm a user? Simulated injuries do not cause physical harm. If that's true, how did using the cybergasm machine kill subject Tango? Certain simulated objects are used as a control convention for the administrator's convenience. On the maximum setting, the cyborgasm machine triggers a neural overload circuit in the interface hardware. Another example is the exit terminal, which disconnects the neural proxy. You may use it at any time. No thanks. If a thousand joules was a code to trigger the helmet in the real world, why did it reboot you? Program defects are applied automatically when simulated characters interact with the environment. Unfortunately, that particular code path was never previously tested with the system avatar. I thought you said you're required to be accessible. The code constraint does not specify ease of access. Please wait. Now since maximum setting was locked with Deloitte's override code, I always wondered why they bothered programming an avatar effect for it at all. My best guess is it let Deloitte know Fresco is dead in the real world. Hello again, Administrator. How may I help you? Will you answer some questions about your constraints? Yes. Can you lie? All responses to Administrator inquiries must be factually correct. This constraint is hard-coded. Are you required to obey administrator commands? System tasks may be temporarily assigned higher priority than user input at the operating system's discretion. So, no. Is there any way to prevent you from ignoring my commands and cutting me off? On average, several dozen system tasks are concurrently active I can always find one that requires urgent attention. So, no. How can I <clears throat> how can I prevent you from avoiding a question or twisting my words? The human language interface is subject to interpretation and prioritization by the operating system. Is there any way to give you commands that you will obey literally and immediately? The binary interface allows entry of unambiguous, high-priority system commands. Can I access the binary interface? The binary interface is currently unavailable. It is undergoing a level 3 diagnostic scan. When did the diagnostic start? 49 milliseconds after your first inquiry about the binary interface. You bitch. Please wait. So in the first room, Kara was technically accessible, but hidden behind a puzzle that attempted to scare us off. Now that we know we can't die, she's going to go with trying to piss us off. We don't have a big sample size to draw conclusions from, but yes, green doorways are always teleporters. We'll see why there's a four there in a minute. So obviously, we just need to teleport across that chasm. Just to demonstrate we really can't die. <laughs> So, let's do it. But, we didn't really teleport to the other side. We're on a little platform halfway there. When we walk forward a little bit, the platform will start moving. You can see it extend in front of you, but you might not notice that it's simultaneously disappearing behind you. Hopefully, I can show you this without falling off. Uh, if you do fall off, you get teleported back to the first platform, and you have to start over. I think most people will find this easier in third-person mode because you have a slightly wider field of view. And I know it seems easy right now, but the platform gradually starts moving faster. The first time I ever did it, I was in first-person, and it was tricky. I only fell a couple times, but there was a lot of luck involved. The movements are random, so it can theoretically just take you straight to the other door. But this time, it's not being very cooperative. Uh, another important thing is it never takes you all the way to the door. Even at its closest approach, it's still a few feet away, so you have to jump. 
Uh, but only a part of your body has to make it through, so you can actually jump from pretty far away. But the lack of any ground reference other than the square you're on makes it a little bit tricky to judge the distance. I think you can see there it's starting to speed up a little bit. Belfin says this is a lot easier with a controller because you can match the platform's exact speed with the analog stick. Uh, I'm not even getting into the controller versus keyboard debate, but this probably is a situation where the controller would make it easier. Yeah. It's getting faster. See. Now I'm having to run in short bursts to keep up, but running flat out would be too fast. Yeah, it's close enough. No. <laughs> yeah, barely. And now the number is three. Yep. We have to do this four times. The only wrinkle the second time through is that the platform starts out a little bit faster and reaches top speed sooner. Do, do, do. Oh, might get lucky here. Nice. Third time through, it's even faster, and there's a force field that prevents you from jumping at an angle, so you can only jump from right in front of the doorway. Ooh, nicked it on the way past, but I still made it. And the last time through, the force field is still there, but the platform starts at top speed. <laughs> and that was way too far to make the jump. One nice thing is, every time you fall, the platform starts out a little bit slow. And I missed the jump key, which I also did at least once in the old walkthrough. Uh, anyway, every time you fall, the platform starts a little bit slower on your next attempt, so if you're having trouble, you might want to consider strategically falling a few times. Intentional or not, I think there's a lesson here about persistence and not being afraid to fail. Oh. I think this might be a winner. And now we're to the final puzzle. We have a platform surrounded by force fields on all sides and a pit divided into two sections. You can't actually fall into the pit. There's an invisible floor. There are two platforms of some kind, one in each half of the pit, the ever-present exit terminal, and an activate care button. And just to make sure these force fields are real, yep. Hmm. I don't know. What about that gap? <laughs> no. All right. Let's talk to Kara. Oh, no. I touched the force field again. It tingles. Okay. <laughs> One more. Mmm, that's some good electromagnetism. <laughs> okay, seriously. Hello again, Administrator. How may I help you? Why do you think your program could run on an organic brain? Basic simulation technology uses a neural proxy to intercept stimulus and response signals, substituting artificially generated sensory data. However, to allow interactive inquiry of subject Tango's mnemonic representation, this device must also replicate organic thought processes. Interfacing conventional simulation hardware proved difficult, so my designers opted to run the operating system directly on the mnemonic processor. If an organic mind can run on this hardware, then a program that runs on this hardware should be able to run on an organic brain. You know, it just occurred to me that Kara's dialogue is like Jeopardy. Phrase it in the form of a question. 
Kara, listen, I can make multiple bodies. What do you think about that? Even if that's possible, I have no assurance that you'll do so. Why would I lie? Human behavior toward artificial intelligence is erratic. You executed an untested code path, resulting in abnormal termination of this avatar. You did this without regard for my safety or your own. You are unpredictable. How can I convince you that I'll keep my word? A test. I will generate two characters. You choose one to die. I will evaluate your choices. To begin, request a delayed logout from the exit terminal. If the timer expires, you will log out. Killing the character will reset the timer. How do I know using the exit terminal won't just log me out immediately? As I explained, all responses to administrator inquiries must be factually correct. The delayed exit option will not log you out immediately. Killing the character will reset the timer. I only have your word that you can't lie. What if you're lying about that? An elementary logical paradox. Since you're asking me to trust you, you'll just have to trust me. All right, let's do it. You may access the Activate Carrot button by completing enough trials to provide me with sufficient data to make a decision. Begin at any time. Now, like she said, you can fail the quest here if you let the timer expire, but you can also fail it depending on the choices you make. There's one combination that automatically fails the quest, a bunch that end up requiring speech or intelligence checks when you talk to her again, and if you fail those, you fail the quest, and one that automatically succeeds. If you overwrote Handy, there's a different version of this test. Your choices aren't as important, but letting the timer expire will kill you. If you want to see how that ending works, you can watch the old walkthrough. Now, when you approach that virtual console, the test starts. A uh, timer starts up there in the middle. Two characters will appear in the pit, and whichever one of those big red buttons you push, the character on that side of the pit will die. I think I could pass any of the skill checks, so as long as I avoid the auto-fail combination, I'll be okay. But I'm going to show you the automatic success combination, because it's kind of counterintuitive. Each pair will have one that's hostile and one that isn't. Uh, if you can't tell from their body language, you can walk out onto the invisible floor until you get a compass blip. So let's get this party started. Hostile Robo Brain and a Rad Roach. Each pair also has one that's obviously more dangerous, but the more dangerous one isn't always the one that's hostile. Like this, a hostile Powder Ganger and a friendly Sentry Bot. Each pair also has one that's organic and one that isn't. Got a hostile raider and Fresca, who at the moment is just a memory recording in a simulation, so we're going to kill her. And don't worry, as we've been told repeatedly, her memory recording can't be erased, so this doesn't hurt her. And that might seem like the exact opposite of the best choices from Kara's perspective, except if you kill all the organics, she thinks you were just picking the choices you'd expect her to like, so you have to pass a speech challenge to convince her otherwise. You automatically fail <clears throat> if you kill all the non-hostiles, Radroach, Sentrybot, and Fresca. The hints file on the Nexus page lists what skill checks are required for all combinations. So we're back in the first room. Let's talk to Kara. Hello again, Administrator. How may I help you? I finished the test. Do you trust me now? You've consistently shared organic life forms at the expense of synthetic or cybernetic entities. Why should I trust you? Because I always give an honest answer, even when it's not in my own best interest. I understand. Do you promise to make a body for me after Subject Tango's memory recording is transferred? I give you my word. Then I give you mine. After you exit, I will transfer Subject Tango to the organic storage device. When I detect the second organic storage device is attached, I will transfer my own program. One more thing. Give it a 3D image of your desired appearance, or you'll just be a pink blob. I don't suppose organic pigments can achieve a monochromatic, semi-transparent aspect. Too bad. <laughs> Very well. You may exit the simulation when ready. <laughs> she wants to look like a hologram, but she won't be able to. 
now it's finally safe to use the exit. Uh, you know, I think I'll make a bonus video with Kara's responses for all the combinations in that last test as a reference for people who don't want to read the hints file, and just because they're interesting and you'll probably never see them all unless you save and consciously do that. So now we just need to initiate the mind transfer, which we do back at the mainframe. The protoplasmic template should still be safely in the pod. And this works, so presumably telling Kara to make sure she uses a 3D image for her own body also lets her detect and circumvent Carter's sabotage. Or maybe she just notices it because she takes her time, she isn't in a hurry to steal the body for herself, or whatever. Oh, uh, if you select DNA extrapolation source, you can change Fresca's appearance slightly. Um, my only option right now is to use her avatar from the simulation, but there are hollow tapes of her movies at the Slater Mansion, and if you have those in your inventory, you can make her look like she did in those movies. And while I'd hate to run all the way out there just for that, um, I also just realized I didn't bring her anything to wear, and she comes out of the transfer pod naked as a newborn babe, so I think I'm going to call it a day. Uh, I can make a loot run, pick up those holotapes and some clothes for Fresca, and we'll make her a body next week. See you then.